so this is uh kind of crazy but i'm just worried that i might have the beginnings of the coronavirus <laughs> and my mum has a uh, incurable cancer and she's on um, chemotherapy that lowers her immune system uh, and she is obviously over the age where uh, it starts to become quite dangerous um, I would go home to so I live with her so I can't go back there and then uh, there's my dad he lives in Surrey but he um, has diabetes and a, and a bad immune system and he's in the age bracket uh, so I've been toying with the idea of wild um, stealth camping in London or in various places for a while uh, and I just thought what the heck I guess this is a kind of opportunity to, to try it and if I get caught I get caught I'll just move on but I know it's kind of insane really but um I'm an insane guy I like uh you know adventure and stuff and even though I guess it's technically illegal to camp in this park uh I just uh thought I'd try it anyway it's a big park there's loads of places where I think I could be uh unseen but I don't know how it works, how hard the uh, park wardens search for people when they're closing. Um, you know, so I'm just going to chill here for a bit. And then I might try go into this bush, which is uh, pretty much covered on all angles. So even if there's people driving around um, checking... You know, as they do when they're closing then uh, I won't be seen from any of the main paths here I don't know how deep into the uh, park they drive um, when they're closing up or if they just go around the edges and literally just shut it I have no idea if they search around a bit and shine their light around um, I don't think so I think they just beep their horn a bit and ring a bell so people are aware it's closing um Anyway, I'm not very prepared, but I did buy a sleeping mat. I have a waterproof um, sheet that's meant to be for a bike, for a bicycle to uh, cover it. So that is waterproof. So my bo my bottom will be protected with the mat, and I'll be able to wrap myself in this waterproof um, sheet. And uh, I also bought a bunch of bin liners. Uh, and also I have a scarf, a hat, and a warm jumper, and I'm already wearing a thick, um, a thick hoodie, so, and it's going to be five degrees tonight, so it's not going to be very cold. Uh, so I'm pretty sure if I wrap myself up, I will, you know, I'll be safe, I won't die of the cold. The only thing is I'm not really prepared when it comes to food and water. Um, I have one donut, which is obviously not very nutritional, but high calories, which could be good. Uh, and a, uh, a tiny bit of water. And there are taps in this park. So either in a bit, or once I've rested my feet, I'll walk, fill my water bottle, or I'll wait until the park's closed. And then I'll go and fill it at the uh, public uh, drinking fountain, that's the word. So it's all a bit scary, obviously, um, and an experiment, but it's something I've been wanting to do. I just hope, I guess the worst case scenario is I get caught and they find me. They try and find me money. At the end of the day, this is just an experiment and it's, it's not dangerous. I can always just hop over the fence and get on a bus home to where my mum lives I can just get there's 24 hour buses uh, but I really obviously I don't really want to do that but then it begs the, uh, the question obviously as well if I do have the coronavirus which hopefully I don't it's just an unrelated you know kind of slight fever and slight kind of flu but if I do have it then uh, this isn't you know I don't know what I'm going to do I guess I'll go to the I'll call the number um, the NHS number non-emergency 111 or something 
and see what they recommend. Uh, but they usually it's self isolation um, for seven days, which I can't I can't do that at home because uh, I don't want to give my mum this because she it could actually kill her. So kind of left in a very tricky situation obviously I could be overthinking it and uh, and I'll just have some unrelated sort of thing hanging around um, another scary thing is the the battery on my phone it's probably not, it's not fully charged it's only like 60% uh, so but I guess that doesn't really matter it's not life and death um, you know at the moment none of it's life and death it's all kind of just a hypothesis but I think I'd rather play it safe and stay away from my house for one night. Um, may, I may feel better tomorrow. So I've walked around and managed to fill up my water bottle. Uh, so I'm just sitting here with this beautiful view. Kind of in a place where if I stayed here until it's closed, I don't know if people would see me, the park rangers. Again, I don't know how deep into the middle of the park they drive uh, when they're closing. Hopefully they just go around the perimeter beeping their horn and lock all the gates and then piss off. Um, so, otherwise, yeah, I'm fucked. As I say, I don't really mind if they catch me if they just move, you know, kick me out. I'm just worried if they want to find me or something. But if I just lie here, then I can always just pretend I fell asleep. Uh, I don't know if this is a good idea, I'm a bit out in the open, but as I say, not really detectable from the main pathways. Pretty far away from them all. If it gets dark before they start looking around, I don't think they'll see me. Well, I moved from the... Um beautiful view. I can see a path there and I can see a path there but I come back to this tree which has this whole shrubbery around it. I'm thinking of going right in there so I should be protected from the wind somewhat and stuff. Uh, I was just reading an article about a guy who slept in London parks for 30 nights so and he said no one seemed to care uh, and he only had one encounter with a homeless person and he said it was really nice so uh, I guess it's going to be alright so I'm just waiting a bit longer really for the light to come down a bit until I think no one's going to find me in there uh, me, yeah I have a donut. I managed to fill up my water bottle, uh, and the sun is still in the sky. Uh, I'm starting to think that this will be less risky than anticipated, and I just have to sleep until the crack of dawn, where they open up the gates, which will be really early. It'll be six or something. So, uh, and then I'm scot free. So. Yeah, strange experiment, but weirdly I've just been yearning to get the fuck out of the buildings and away from London like so badly recently. I've even considered homelessness or just walking, you know, across Europe with a tent and just hiking for weeks. So maybe this is a good balance where I just go out and do some some stealthy urban camping now and again. So maybe next time I'll take a bigger bag and be more prepared, but this was very uh, impromptu. This was impulsive reaction to not feeling well and thinking I may have the coronavirus and, uh, you know, and I may give it to my mum. Uh, the sun's kind of coming down. I'm just going to sit here, see what happens, move into my, my uh, sanctuary there, maybe sooner than later. So... Uh just lying here, a bit cold, I'm lying on some bin bags and uh, stuff at the moment, kind of waiting for it to get a bit darker, I've seen a guy in a high vis jacket wandering around, kind of worried, uh, and maybe park rangers that kind of walk around, just look around, I don't know though, 
Um, but where I'm lying, people can see me from the path, so I'm kind of weighing up whether I should just go into the shrubs, put my mat down, uh, just trying to be a bit stealth about it. So I was going to try and wait until it gets more dark, but um, yeah, there's bats flying around, which is quite cool. Let's see, as you can hear, I'm a bit cold uh, and it's getting dark. So soon I will slink into the shrubs right next to me, see if I can unroll my mat. Hopefully I'm not about to get busted. Uh, kind of, people can see me where I am. But I'm just in a public park, just lying down. I could just say I fell asleep. Anyway, shivering a bit, but I know uh, I'm not going to die. I think once I'm lying on a mat and wrap myself in bin bags, I will be pretty toasty. I can hear someone's voice over there. So you may be able to hear that it's got very quiet now. I don't think there's many people around. I can't really see anyone anymore. So I guess very soon I should think about wrapping myself up a bit and getting in that bush because I don't think anyone will see me do it now. I don't know if you heard that, but there is a, a, a vehicle driving around with a bulletin, you know, on a speaker, loudspeaker saying, um, attention, attention, the park is now closing. So I'm just going to lie here a little bit longer. It's pretty much got to the um, time of night where no one's going to be able to see me. a vehicle driving around. Okay, yeah, there's a vehicle driving around, checking things out. shrubbery. I've rolled out my sleeping mat. Just gonna make sure the coast is clear and uh, wrap up a bit warmer.
Well, it seems to be going pretty well so far. I'm just lying flat. I've got my legs in the bin bag. I'm just trying to stay really still and quiet. Because they're checking the park now. I'm driving around. But I very much doubt anyone will spot me here. Especially lying flat. Well, I got to the point where uh, it's pretty obvious no one's going to really spot me unless I they see my light or torch or, or lighter. a bit concerning. Strange sound. Sounds like a motorbike or something. Fuck. I hope that's not one last little lurk around in a smaller vehicle. I think that um, vehicle must be outside the park and I'm okay. Still a bit concerned obviously. I can't hear anything like any people or vehicles inside the park except that motorbike thing. I am a bit cold. So I'm going to wrap myself up more. Now I think I'm safe. Um, put some more bin bags around my body and stuff. Uh, I probably should have bought a sleeping bag. <laughs> I can always get a bus home or go for a jog. So, seems like it's all clear. I'm all wrapped up and it's not too cold. I'm going to get my legs really wrapped in uh, the bin bags because they've come off my legs somehow. Just lying here. Everything seems okay. I don't know how I'm going to sleep because <laughs> it's a strange situation to sleep in but I am tired I don't think I've got the coronavirus <laughs> if I do then it's in the very early stages but um, this cool fresh air is doing me some good just hope I'm not near any dog poo when I wake up I think, uh, I think I'm scot free. I'm sitting here wrapped in a bunch of bin bags. I'm pretty warm actually. Get in the fetal position wrapped in the uh, bike cover that I have. I can always put more and more bin bags around me. I got uh, two on my top half, one in around my waist and uh, one on my legs uh, so nothing bad happened yet <laughs> you can just about see the lights over there but yeah you can't really see you can't see the tree or anything I can still just about see in this light so I'm home I uh, survived um, but uh, I'm just editing this um, unfortunately I didn't really get any shots uh, of what happened after that basically I no matter how many bin bags I was wrapping around my body I could never seem to stay warm um, it's kind of stupid of me obviously to go out there so ill prepared 
uh, and I uh, guess it's a learning curve, um, but yeah, next time, 100% gonna have a uh, sleeping bag, <laughs> which is kind of stupid that I didn't have one yet, I know, I should have bought one really, I was in a camping shop just before that, and I got the mat, I totally uh, misinterpreted how cold five degrees would be, because um, obviously there's the wind, uh, you're lying on a, a cold floor, uh, sleeping mat didn't seem to, it did help obviously, but I don't know if um, it was that great at keeping the cold out from underneath me, so definitely next time bivy sack um, and sleeping bag, I think, you know, plus the mat. Uh, and that might be interesting. The other thing was, like, obviously, uh, my mind started playing tricks on me, and just just the kind of fear factor of being kind of pretty out in the open like that in the middle of the night uh, in central London, or well, not central, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was uh, pretty hard to rest. <laughs> Every time I thought I was going to fall asleep, I was too cold, or I thought I could hear someone wandering around at one point I thought um, there was a light in the woods coming slowly closer to me and it was but it was just my mind playing tricks on me um, just kind of the leaves and stuff uh, in front of this um, lamp kind of made it look like it was moving anyway it was a crazy experience um, I definitely would uh, consider going back and trying it again being much more prepared I do have a hammock the guy that did it for 30 days um, seemed to do it all in a hammock, which obviously means you're not on the floor with potential animals and insects, dog poo, you know, and other things that were kind of on my mind. Um, yeah, pretty terrifying, and uh, I had to try and get out of the park um, in the middle of the night. Um, just wandering around the park looking at all these uh, gates um, and all of them were extremely high gates I really thought it would be easier to get out so I had to check uh, at least three exits before I found um, a spot where I could uh, get out and even that was kind of risky I was half expecting a bunch of park rangers to turn up or police or security or something um, but no no one really cares, I guess. You're just in a park at night. It was a ro royal park, so I was just concerned that maybe the security was a bit more extreme. Um, but no, I got out. It was really cold. Um, just started walking. I got the night bus, and I got home about 2.30 in the morning. And uh, yeah, pretty knackered from that experiment, but it was uh, kind of worth it. Um, but yeah, the main thing was I just uh, realized that it was kind of one in the morning and I felt pretty good. I don't know what, why the the camping kind of woke me up, I guess, being in the cold, snapped me out of my uh, fluey feeling. So I just kind of thought I can't have the coronavirus if I'm feeling that healthy. And there's nothing, there's nothing I can do anyway in regards to isolating myself and my mum would have had it anyway because it lasts for 5 to 14 days on the surfaces but for me it was just uh, an excuse to push myself to try something a bit wild that i uh, been thinking about and wanting to do for a while so it just gave me some time away from home to, to try that and see how I felt and um, yeah, I still feel a bit off obviously but... I don't know, hopefully it's not the coronavirus and I'm not spreading it. Anyway, I'm going to finish editing this and see what people think of the craziness. And uh, yeah, I think I'll try some other things out. I do own a hammock. Just got to buy a sleeping bag and we'll see what happens. Hopefully my phone won't run out of battery so I can actually film some of the last bits of that. But it got to a point where I was pretty uh, pretty grim and I didn't really feel like speaking on camera because I was freezing and just really tired and grumpy and just wanted to get out of there and pretty scared as well of just all the possibilities so be prepared is the, is the main uh, lesson I, I learned from that